Welcome aspiring architects and designers to a comprehensive journey through the world of architectural excellence. In this video, we'll unravel the secrets of mastering architect to create residential architecture. Join me as I dive deep into the art of crafting residential apartment buildings, one module at a time. Discover the power of modules and the Hotlink Manager, your dynamic geo for creating versatile apartment units. Watch as the building blocks come together, effortlessly transforming your vision into a concrete reality. But that's not all. Elevate your designs with the curtain wall tool, your key to crafting captivating facade designs. From contemporary elegance to modern minimalism, the possibilities are limitless. And speaking of facades, explore the innovative use of layers and layer combinations to unveil a range of design options. Easily present and compare facade variations, ensuring your project is as diverse as your imagination. No project is an island, and that's why I will guide you through the intricate process of site creation. Learn how to seamlessly integrate your masterpiece into its surroundings, capturing the essence of existing neighboring buildings. But wait, there is more. With step-by-step -step demonstration and insightful tips, you'll gain the confidence to navigate architects' intricate features, turning challenges into triumphs. So whether you are a beginner or a seasoned designer or anyone in between, this video is your passport to architectural brilliance. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into architect. All right, I have a sketch here for the side plan that we're gonna use for this demonstration. Um, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, make sure you check the link on the description to download this side plan sketch for free. Um, the first thing that we need to do is to convert this into or produce a 3D for this side uh, plan in order for us to create a base or a foundation for our for our building. So I'll go here under the design tool palette and activate the mesh tool. And uh, what I need to do is to check the polygonal uh, geometry method. Uh, as an input that I'm going to use and then I'm going to quickly draw organically the shape or the mesh that will represent the the site and then I'll uh, activate the arrow tool let's select this uh, and open its settings what I want is to come here under the floor plan and section to get rid of the cover fill I'm going to uncheck this uh, box for cover fill and then hit ok once we're done with that uh, let's move on to the roads i'm going to pick the parameter again for the the mesh once we are done also i'm going to use the geometry method of polygon so that i can just uh, trace over uh, the points of the road from the sketch i'll just quickly produce this by doing that I'm not going to worry with making a mistake because I can just come back and fix that. So if I'm not accurate, I'll just continue and then I'll come in, fix everything once. But I'll try and make sure I get it right for the first time. There. And then I'm going to complete it to there. Perfect. So if you select that, I know I've made a mistake somewhere here. I can move this point to that corner. Perfect. And then if you check on 3D, let's see the result we produced so far. This is what we have. I'll select the slab for the road and then change the material here on the info box to a concrete. And uh, I'll open its settings to unoverwrite the top surface so that it uses the concrete material or the concrete surface to represent a 3D window. If you hit OK, this is what you get. You see, still have the glittering of materials as you can see. To fix this issue, I would come here on the options menu and let's find, no, is it options? Under documents, let's find the uh, solid element. I'm looking for solid element operation. So it's on the design uh, menu, sorry. If you come here you find solid element operation and let's expand the new operation i'll select the mesh as a target and then the the road the road as an operator and then i'm going to use the subtraction with upward extrusion and then hit execute so that i have this the reason why i'm using solid element operation other than other tools like i could use the subtract um, polygon tool if you pick this one of the point i could use this um, subtract 
with polygon and then I magic wand I activate the magic wand by press and hold the spacebar key then click on the road to carve in or to create a hole into our mesh the reason I'm not gonna use that um, uh, method is because it's permanent once you've done that it will create a permanent hole in your mesh if you try uh, come and edit maybe the geometry of your your, your roads is going to be a lot of work i like when you're using solid element operations so in this case if i had to move the road position or activate whatever geometry it will still be a live operation because it's a live operation right so if i hit undo you see it doesn't even affect the mesh perfect that's the two different or that's the advantages and disadvantages of using the both two um methods so i'll click and close this um, solid element operation let's go back to the plan view and start the project so I would also try to fix this issue for example I would extend um, the road just towards the my mesh just to fix that I don't want it to look incomplete so I'll just finish it off like that same applies to this edge yeah. do for all the edges okay, so the side also needs attention same to this area I think this is the last part all right so if we check on 3d you have now more like a complete uh, thing okay so we have some islands here there and there let's try to um, capture that so i would come here and uh, i'll pick parameters of the main mesh and then um, press space bar and hold to activate the mesh one and then i'll click on this um, line to fill in that i'll do the same to the um, circle and if we check on 3d you should have those in line so what i need to do is to select both of them and maybe instead of dropping it down by minus 200 the offset from zero let's say 150 okay so that you can raise it a bit so it doesn't clash with that okay that's what i wanted to create so let's go back and uh see what else we can do we have the site here this is the site i'm going to use we're assuming that the buildings around on this block are existing so in order for us to capture that i'm going to use a slab and a roof tool to capture the existing buildings so let's quickly do that i'll pick the slab tool in your design two palettes i'll start with the building that is next to the plot uh, apparently the um, layer is off for this and i'm going to create a layer a layer specifically for the existing buildings instead of using a structural bearing uh, layer it's hidden because we are working on a side view right so i'm going to cancel this if you come here on the view map you see we are under side view right this is the side view the side plan uh, view so i will uh, control l to bring in my layers or go to you can go to the options menu and then element attributes then your layer settings so i need to come it down below here and click on new i'm going to create existing uh let's see just existing buildings existing buildings layer and hit ok under site it should be active so i'll make sure that it's been updated okay and hit ok so i will uh, activate the slab tool change the layer to existing buildings then come here on the uh, structure change this to a basic i will change the material to just a s space frame or s space between these two let's just go for the s space and then once you're done with that oh well forget to key in the height of the building the height of the building should be around oh, um let's say 30 meters I want to say 30 meters then draw it to fill in this area like that 
I'll do the same to this one. All the plots that are aligned with that to there. Go in this side as well and do the same. Perfect. So if we check on 3D, we will have something like this. Oh, it's not showing because uh, it's existing. The layer might be off. Or let's try to right click and then say show show all in 3D. It doesn't show. If it doesn't show, go back to the layer settings and then make sure we are on the site layer combination. Currently we are drafting because the existing layer existing building layer under the drafting is off as you can see here but once we change to the layer combination of site it's active so i'll hit ok to update my view now we have our elements showing so i'll pick i'll select all the slabs by activating the slab tool and then hit ctrl a then let's change the the reference plane location instead of being at the top now i'm going to do it on the bottom so that we can project the height of the buildings going up vertically like this perfect i think i could have used a different space let's check this one ah, perfect i think this is okay the white color it's fine where there's a gap it's our building or our proposed site so i don't want to have the building equal so i'll just stagger the height so this one i can make it maybe 2.5 oh sorry 25,000 the other ones will be 28 something like that just to start out then this will be 32 this will be 28 this i can make it uh, 31 Right. perfect we have something like this i can also create depth between the building instead of having them aligned to that extent i'll select this edge and then activate the offset edge then uh, maybe use a uh, meter send it back by meter this one also we can use the same oh sorry we can bring this one back by 500 do the same to the other side let's push this back by this i'll push it back by one meter and i can bring this one at front maybe 500 something like this so by so doing it creates the geometry for your buildings right and now let's move on to the roof i'm going to use the roof tool to finish it off this and create a variation of uh, buildings in this case this one will be roofed as well with the pitched roof i'll just draw a pitch like that and then i'll select this pick the points i don't know what you call this uh, the ridge pick the ridge points right and then i'll activate this uh, stretch horizontal ridge and then let's use the the reference line the blue reference line is as a guide just like that do the same to the other side as well pick it from there stretch it all the way to the to the blue line all right so you have something like this in order to complete it let's um stretch or extend the height of our slab by using the stretch height then i'll make sure stretch it all the way underneath my roof like that i'll right click while it's being selected let's right click and then go to connect and bring solid element operation so that is being selected as a target i need to select the roof as an operator then change the operation to subtraction with upward extrusion then hit execute so we have something like that i don't think i need to have the overhang in this case so i'm going to select the roof let's scroll down our mouse on the info box and check for the offset let's make it zero so that you can have something like that i think it looks fantastic perfect i'm pleased with the results i can now multiply or copy this up in other buildings so i'm going to zoom in by using the wheel Control shift d in your keyboard to uh, get a copy of this element 
so I can use this point. I'll use the point of the roof and apply it to this one. I can do the same. Let's pick on this point and uh, go to that one. Staggering them. Some will be roofed with heaps, some will be just a flat roof. Okay, so that gives me that variation. So I'll pick this point of the slab and stretch the height to underneath of the roof. Do the same with this one. Uh, pick one of the points, make sure the stretch height on the pet palette is active, then stretch it under the side of the roof. So I would select both of these um, buildings and uh, choose or add as a target. And then let's do the same to our roof, add as an operator. I'm going to use the same operation, which is subtraction with upward extrusion. Let's hit execute. That will be um, created. Now we have some a bit of an issue here to solve. It's because our roof doesn't extend beyond the slab. So I'll just quickly fix it. Let's select the roof. And then I'll use from this reference line, I would reference with uh, the edge of the um, slab and then that will clean up that error. So now we have uh, our existing structures in place and in a side plane. So once I need to now do the access to the plot, let's go back to our site. And um, here, let's zoom in there. We need to select the road. And I'm going to add this a polygon to this road. Let's uh, select one of the edge of the road there. I'm going to activate add polygon in your pet palette. And then I'm going to draw using a rectangle input. Let's activate the rectangle geometry input and then draw a rectangle to add onto the road like that. And then let's select uh, this. Okay, let's just do it on 3D. I'll activate the 3D window so that you can see. All right. This slab I think needs to go all the way to there. But let's start first by sorting out this issue. I'll pick the point of this corner, then chamfer it. Instead of fillet, I want to chamfer it by maybe 1.5. Something like this. Do the same to the other side. Chamfer. Make sure chamfer uh, option is um, selected, and then 1.5. So I need now to set a paving for that because the building is going to have underground parking. Sorry, the first. Uh, floor what i meant to say, i'm trying to explain that the ground floor will be just parking and uh it will be just parking let's just click close this solid element operation let's go back to the side plane and uh i'll pick parameter of the slab let's just draw no this is not a slab this is a mesh now i need to introduce um, a slab to make the pavement the pavement or paving of the parking so activate the slab and then draw on your side using the rectangular method like that okay so then uh, check on 3d i'm sorry guys with uh, the noise background or the, the background noise i'm doing this on the site i'm recording this video on, on site so there will be some machinery uh, background uh, in this video just bear with me okay so now we have a slab which is this I'm going to pick the slab. Let's change the material here on the info box to be a concrete material. And uh, as you could see, now we have a difference of the levels be between the slab, which is for the parking, and then the the road. And we that means we need to create a ramp in order for the cars to access our parking. So that it's easy, my friend. I can just come here and select the road pick this point change the uh, tool or the command in the pet palette to elevate the mesh let's just elevate it to this point just to create a ramp just like that okay that's what i like about the mesh using it to create roads it will give you this kind of options now you have this nice gentle ramp that to access your site perfect so we're done with our site in the next um, uh, stage we'll be doing the uh, building itself all right we're moving on to the next stage of doing the actual building itself. we're gonna start with the ground uh, parking so what i did i just created a sketch from a separate file in order for me to speed up this tutorial 
because otherwise it could, it's going to take more than two hours so i didn't want this video to go to that extent so what i i'll do i would copy the sketch which is this parking underground park as you could see the access to this is you come here and then you drive through here and access this parking you have other side parking on your right this side is just your your lifts and uh, elevator and the staircase position i think let's just uh, place the staircase here so let's activate the stair tool in this case i will um, uh, scroll the wheel in your info box and then i want the total width of the staircase to be 1.1 oh, sorry about that 1100 hit enter and then i'll start placing my staircase so i would draw a guideline here let's just pick a guideline from this um what you call this i don't know what you call it but they, they're both on other sides we have it here and then another one is there for the vertical we have the bottom one so i'm gonna just grab this and drag it all the way to here that will determine the starting point of our staircase right and then once you're done uh, we're going to click on this point and let's draw a flight i'm gonna click the second point on this corner and another one will be once i've clicked the second point i'll have to change because now we are creating a landing instead instead of just create a normal landing i'm going to use the winder with equal goings so i'll activate that one then uh, I scroll down here oh, sorry sorry about that yeah and then i'll click on this point to specify the second point and then now i'll need to go all the way instead of now continue with the winder with equal goings i'm going to switch it to the straight flight all right so it doesn't okay i think you could see it doesn't show or the result is going to be what okay here it is yeah when you complete it with there you'd see now the entire staircase so i'll click on this point to finish it off that's basically what you have there so yeah nothing fancy nothing uh substandard let's uh, activate our arrow tool and select all these elements right click to copy it or just Control c in your keyboard once you are done with the copying or once the copy has been added to the copy clip to the clipboard sorry once it's been added to the clipboard you can now move to your your main file and activate your ground floor because now we are going to work on the ground floor instead of a site you could see by default we have only three floors but we're creating more than 10 floors for this building so what i need to do first let's um, open the ground floor right open the ground floor right click here to paste the um, ground floor parking uh, drawing it will paste it because i've used the same reference point to create those um, sketch the ground floor parking so by default you have to choose the original location or by default you pick the original location and then i have to click outside to complete that operation so i need to select get rid of this field like that so now you see our building sits right on the edge of our boundaries here it will be just a garden um, for our uh, structure okay so i will right click on the ground floor view or one of the views here and then activate the story settings or just click Control plus seven in your keyboard to access your story settings so what i need to do is to select the story two and then hit on insert above up until you hit the number you would want i think i need 11 let's just get rid of uh number 12 so we have 11 um Flows. This one I'll rename it to or give it a name to the roof level. We just say roof. Okay. We just say roof. And then these ones will remain as numbers because they are typical. They are typical floor plan. And then hit OK once you're done. So they have been updated into your your story or your project browser. Okay, let's go back to our to our ground floor plan. So if we check on 3D, this is basically what we have. this slab is too big so instead of having it that way let's 
change the height oh sorry to 150 okay 150 is the correct um is the correct uh, value and i don't know why the elements are not here i could see we have uh, the columns there the layer must be off let's control l to bring our layer settings and then you see we are viewing this 3d window that's the cost that's the reason why elements are not showing we are viewing this 3d window under layer combination of site but we only we all know site we have or site represent only activities that are affecting site plane so i would activate the drafting one and then hit okay all the elements should be uh, fine so now we have uh, this we've lost the buildings we've lost the existing buildings because of uh, we've viewing the study window on the drafting so this elements by so doing it helped us to clean up our model as well so you could see these elements the roof the roof plan the roofs are supposed to be under existing okay and then if i control l again and bring and use the site layer combination i would say this slab has to be not on the layer of existing i would find uh, a layer for structural structural bearing we don't have a structural yeah there it is this also should be landscape elevator should be on let's just put it under structural uh bearing as well okay so now we we are sure our our building or our project file has been clean so if i toggle between the views i won't have issues okay there we go there we go so now i have the site without having the context i mean the existing buildings but because i want to focus only on the building now okay so that's basically what we have we would have a parking here we can do parking markings let's just quickly do that on this i'll go on the site so on the on the plan view and let's activate the slab tool this time around i'm gonna change the material to let's just leave the material like that i'll open its settings and set the surfaces to be a paint a white paint right make sure all the surfaces are being linked hit ok and then i'll draw a line i'll draw a box of a slab that will represent the width of the parking which is five meters and then the i mean the length which is five meters and then this will be 100 perfect so that's basically what i have here i would control shift d to carry a copy to this side but it has to be positioned on the center let's just position on the center like that i think same to the other side all right so i would control shift e to rotate a copy to have it on this line and i can stretch this one all the way let's just stretch this edge by using offset edge all the way to here okay and then i can continue making copies of this one Control shift d to place it there i think it should be enough so if we check on 3d this is what we have this that's what we have i don't know why this one is not showing because uh, i think yeah, let's check all right we didn't place it Control shift d pick with the midpoint and then place it there you could control shift d again let's copy it to here i'll stretch this edge to there let's control shift e to rotate a copy to there and i'm going to continue to click or stretch this edge all the way to that side i'm going to control d to put it on the other side as well then i'll complete the remaining ones by i don't know why sorry about that they're supposed to be meeting at 90 degrees not leaving this funny so i'm going to offset this one to the same 
to this edge let's just offset to that side okay so what i need to do is to carry a copy of this one Control shift d i could have used the midpoint to carry it so i've made a mistake there and i'm just gonna place it and then move it by the midpoint like that right we still have the last um part to be done i'll control shift d and do the same to there i can offset this edge to make sure the connections are perfect the joint between the markings something like that if you check on 3d you would have a complete parking arrangement for your site okay so like i said this side is a landscape so i'm going to get rid of the the slab instead of having it there so let's uh, go out select your slab pick one of the points of your slab i'm going to use subtract with polygon and i'll hold press and hold your spacebar key to activate the magic word and then click on the on this uh line i can offset this line a bit to somewhere here yeah so if you check on 3d that's basically what you have you have a green area there but i can just pick this edge offset to somewhere there to allow reverse angle for me especially the cars that are on this parking bay and i can also chamfer that area for easy reverse for easy reversing so let's just use 1.5 is fine yes so that someone can just um reverse and go out easily without affecting um, the garden so if you look at the markings we have issue of glittering of materials i'm going to do the same as we did for the road and the the terrain to clean up that i'm going to select all of this and group because we are best this is one of the best practices uh, guys if you want to um, control and manage your elements within project you have to uh, group elements according to their subgroups or subcategories like for the markings they have to be on one group in order for me to select it and manage it accurately okay so i'll right click uh, or i'll bring solid element operation to subtract the markings out of the the the, 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 the the parking surface so i'll right click while selected the surface and connect bring solid element operation now the parking surface is being selected as a target so i need to select um, the markings as an operator uh, i would suspend group to select all of them because they are group that's the reason just mentioned that uh, it's very important to group elements according to their subcategory so I'm, I'm reaping the benefits of doing that now so i'll add this as a target and then i'll just use uh subtracting with upward extrusion for the operation and then execute so now i have a clean site parking everything it's it's flawless okay so now the next step is to do the upper floors right the upper floors where the bedrooms or all the units all the units are being located so the members of this uh, apartment will be just coming accessing the plot from this road and then have parking here and then from there they can either use the staircase or use the the lift or the elevator okay so let's um, go back to the ground floor in this in this case where well, i have also a separate uh, sketch for the units for the apartment units that I would use to speed up this um, demonstration. Let me open the file and then copy the elements to here. All right, um, this is the layout that we are going to use for our unit. This is one unit, and one unit would cover each floor, right? So we have just one floor for one unit. It's a three bedroom uh, apartment. So, what we need to do here. I don't know why the elevator is not showing something might be wrong here so i would say Control l and see if all the elements are there but i don't think we can just go to objects object settings let's find 
let's search for the elevator on the search bar elevator where is the elevator 26 there we go i'm not gonna bother much with the style i'll just hit ok then place it let's rotate this by ctrl e in your keyboard and then i'll move it to that it's supposed to fit in in this area i'll just stretch by that corner like that okay it looks impressive that's what i want yeah it's a three bedroom um, apartment here we have our kitchen that has a little bit of a balcony there we also have another balcony for this bedroom uh, we can decide if it's a balcony or, or whatever but i think it would be better to have a balcony there and then we have the open dining and lounge here we can place some up furniture for that spaces hit ok and open the options for the for the object settings let's find i would say um lounge and i wanted to i wanted the layout let's come under the libraries and find furniture layouts then we scroll down we should have sofa layout here let's hit ok i'm gonna place it somewhere there and then we go back for the dining let's go back for the dining there we go the dining instead of having i'm going i'm gonna go with the, the rectangle table and place it somewhere there yeah yeah i'm gonna have it like that then the kitchen perfect so we because this is typical across all the floors we have around nine floors or ten floors for this apartment the best way or the best practice to carry out such kind of project because the floors are typical you would have to create one floor as i did for this case and then uh, reference this floor as a module by using a hot link manager in your project file so in order for me to to reference this uh, file to the main file which is this project okay i'm gonna have to use hot link manager and save that layout as a module so that you can repeat it across all the floors so let's go back to that uh, apartment layout and save this as a, a module i'm going to select everything then go to file external content save selection as a module so in this case i'm going to just give it a name i'll just say a module then save it will save uh, uh, this file okay and then let's go back to our host file our project and then i'll open the first floor because that's where this uh, flows are gonna start and uh, in this i'm going to open the uh, file let's go to external content and then open the hot link manager oh sorry about that instead of hot link manager we have to place the module first okay let's go back to file and then external content let's place the hot link first and i'm going to select the module that i just saved and then go down here to new module from file and then locate the folder make sure the file type changes to a module which is mod uh, format right i will select the just created module file then select i'm going to um there's an option here to ch change choose the story that you want to place it i'm going to place it on the first floor because that's the current story that i'm working on then hit ok once you're done let's go to select your module will be placed here we could see here with the module and on the story on the first story source this is the link to the folder so and then the master layer it's under module unit by default i can create this layer for you don't worry about that and then uh, once you're done you can place the hot link module and then wait for the magic to happen perfect there we go in order for you to complete this operation click outside the queue i could see we have two staircases there that are sitting on top of each other right i think uh, it's because of the 
ground floor staircase, if I'm not mistaken, and they're not in line. Let's try to solve that uh, problem. So I'm going to select this and then make sure it's underground. Oh, it's supposed to be sitting on zero to zero. There, even here on zero, so that it doesn't encroach with other staircase. Yeah, now it's clean. You could see even on 3D, they will be stacking accordingly wait for it perfect so this is what we have as a unit we have one unit now of three bedroom uh, apartment okay so that's basically that now we need to multiply this to all the remaining uh, floors because it's a model you would see it as you would see it it's an editable on this file because it's a hot link, it's referenced instead of um, editable material. And you could see with their spots, the hot spots changes to a, a rectangle or a square instead of uh, a normal element with a, a circle um, hot spot. Just to clarify that, if you go to the ground floor and then if we select one of the material here that are not hot link, for example, this wall you see the hot spot is circle same applies to this it's circle but if you go back to the hot link um, elements if you select them they are square and you cannot do anything in terms of to edit it even if you can open the settings you would not overwrite because the okay is grayed out or it's additive right so let's see now how to multiply this according all the stories you could copy paste it on each floor but that would take you ages to finish that the best way or to speed up the process is to do it on 3d i'm going to do it on 3d here and uh, i will pick i'll start by picking this point right and then activate the multiply command in your pet palette and uh, we're going to uh, activate the elevate because we are multiplying vertical and we're going to use spread right because we want to spread it according to the height of each story our story height is 3000 millimeters okay and then make sure this vertical displacement set home story by elevation has been checked in order to make sure that each floor or each element in each floor recognize that particular floor I would, I would show you the feedback once you've checked this i'll hit ok and then uh, let's start multiply from this point going all the way so i'll have to count the number of multiplications is one two three four five six seven eight nine Let's confirm. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's supposed to be 10 floors. I'll click on the 10th floor. Perfect. It should be fine now. Just wait a bit for the feedback because it demands a power of your GPU. So it will take a second to complete that. Thank you that's the magic okay so that's basically how it's being stacked okay the reason i was using that methodology of checking the homes home story elevation is because if i select one of the floor here you'd see it's being linked to a relevant floor so the same applies to this one it's on story three if we check this one it will be a eight story that's the perfect example of using home link it to home story um, you can also confirm it on the floor plan if we open the fifth floor for example and then if we select all the material they will be linked to the fifth floor or they are linked to the fifth floor which is great okay so from here you have now a room to play around with the facade because they are building they're building on on either side this side and other side we're not going to do anything in terms of uh, treating these surfaces both this side and this side so the only focus will be on the side because it's on the road that's the 
facade of your building okay so if you change the graphic override to simplify it let's go here because we've this profile doesn't give us option to have a lot of uh, tools here especially on the bottom of our navigator because we've extended our tool palette with the name so if you go to the options menu and then work environment profiles let's change this because currently we are at basic profile that's why we even see names alongside our tools so if you go back and then change this to a profile architectural profile 26 this you you change the profile to this more like a minimalistic profile you see now we have the tools for overrides so i can just quickly change this to simplify it in order for me to appreciate the model accurately perfect so that's basically what we have the next step now is to before i can even focus on the facade i want to treat the roof part so let's go to the roof plane also the last floor which is floor 11 no, this floor was supposed to be just for I think let's delete it I don't think we have to have elements there. we only have to have a staircase showing and the elevator so I would reference this 10th floor I will right click on top of it and then say show as reference perfect so that I can uh, activate the wall tool I would use the rectangle um, operator make sure the reference line is outside okay so that i can pick this corner and draw it all the way to there and uh, let's change the base structure of the the wall to a basic something like that okay and then uh, this is going to be just an apron or what you call it a parapet wall and it has to be around 1.5 Okay, then I'm going to have another wall that will cover the hoist of the shaft of your staircase and the lift. So it's going to come from this point to there. I think this one, this wall. So let's suspend our group so that I can select this wall. I position it right on top of this one. And then uh, I'll do the same to this one. It has to be taken from outside. Let's bring it right on the edge like that. Select both of them and chamfer or fillet or intersect. Same as to this two. Intersect them. Okay, so in 3D basically you're going to have something like this. Okay, something like that this one has to be a full wall so i will suspend group it has to be three meters instead of 1.5 and i would suspend group select this wall to fix this um, connection between that i would just um, stretch the height and reference to the height of the the parapet wall perfect because this will be just for the room of the shaft for the staircase and the the lift so let's put the slab now the, the roof on top let's go back and activate our slab tool and make sure i'm using geometry method of rectangle the slab is going to be inside i'm going to draw it from the inside so i'll start with the inside corner then to that same applies to this area to that but uh, the height of this is going to change to maybe let's say um 2.5 yeah it's supposed to be that way wait for the feedback oh by the way this also has to go maybe a little bit up by 100 yes we can confirm that with 100 let's see no it should be I don't think it's 100 it should be it should flash with this wall right it should be 200 let's say 200 perfect 
or let's just do it manually and try flush it with uh, okay so we have an issue here you see um, this the flaws of that uh, doesn't they cut through our our glazing so the position of this floor has to change to be in order for us it has to change I don't know should we change the height I think the best way is to change the height of our our curtain walls so all of our curtain walls you could see they are they are in jeopardy so we need to go back to our to our module I'll go back to that file click on 3d okay instead of having this at full height I'm going to drop it down because I know the thickness of the slab is, is 300 so if this is three meters high we need to cater for the thickness of the slab it's around three meters right so let's cater for the thickness of the slab which is 300 so I'm gonna have our height of kitten wants to be 2.7 okay so once you're done with that let's go back on the floor plane and resave this again as module I'll go to file external content save selection as module and then I'll replace the module that I've used and then say yes you want to replace it so once you're done with that here you need to go back to the file to the project file and update those changes so to update the changes we go back to file and external content let's bring in hotlink manager hotlink module manager so this is the hotlinked module right and then this is the name of our project file which is the host we call it the host file and then this is the module so you, under the hot linked sources section you could see the exclamation mark that there are changes for this um, module that have been uh, done so you see last updated it was the time when we were loading it and it looks it's been modified even the time making so what you need to just to do is just to select it and then update once it says update you can hit ok so those changes will be um, updated to all the apartment units that's the importance of using hotlink manager or using modules in aggregate most especially for buildings like such as offices uh, uh, apartments because you find most of the layers most of the floors are typical so now you could see we have fixed that issue our curtain walls are sitting on the right um, height which is perfect okay so we have everything in place now the roof is in place the all the units are being in place so the most important thing, I think we don't need to have these columns here these columns is to come up because they're not supporting or carrying any load there okay so the next step now is to do the facade and treat um, I'll show you different ways of doing options because uh, we're gonna test different styles of facade and I'll show you how to use uh, layers and layer combination to create options design options right okay let's now see uh, the best ways to assess this into context I'll control L and bring the layer combination for site and let's see that we need to bring everything under site or instead of say site let's create a new layer combination that to activate all elements all elements to be visible in, in a file so I'll just say new and then this will be all I'll just say all and then hit ok then from here once the layer combination is being selected I'll select all the layers by selecting one at the top and then scroll down and hold shift to select the last one to activate just a normal or a basic uh, um, system selection once you're done with that let's activate all the elements to be active under this layer combination and hit update okay so it will give you all the elements like that let's see yes perfect so that basically what we have in relation to other buildings okay so let's see now how to come up with different options different design options for for this um, apartment the first one is to use all of them is to use curtain wall let's um, start on the 
first floor. Let's start on the first floor. Okay. If you start on the first floor, I'm going to draw a curtain wall. So let's activate a curtain wall tool. And for now, I don't care of the settings, but let's just open the settings. And there's one settings that I want you to understand. By default, arcade will come with a place boundary frame settings on the center on the boundary under member placement. So this is very important, guys. You always want to insert the boundary or the frames inside the boundary. Okay, because it will guide you um, or it will have a proper representation of your elements within your kit, you know, especially when you are placing. Hit OK and uh, let's uh, see which side is this. That's the side. I'm going to draw from here, going all the way to there. And then I need to flip my curtain wall, select it, and then flip on the orientation section. So you see we have an issue of these walls are not in line with our skeleton wall or slip. So I'll go back to the um, module and then update that. So let me just unsuspend groups so that I can select uh, these two and use adjust tool to adjust them to all the way to there. Perfect. So once you're done, you're going to do the same thing. Select, go to file, external content, save selection as a module, and then we replace the active module there. Then, okay, wait for the selection to be updated. Perfect. And then we go back to our host file and go to file. Let's open the external content and find the hot link module manager by uh, automatically to show this has been modified we need to update it perfect then hit ok to uh, load those changes to your file let's wait a sec boom perfect so now if you check on the 3d you would have um, your curtain wall be placed from starting from the first floor which is the side okay so uh, that's basically you could now uh, play around with the patterns and settings of this but what i want is just to have a block of that so i would say select this it open the settings and then under the scheme let's select the scheme and uh, what i want is to select all these guys or I can just change the scheme favorites to something simple that I can reuse, like this one. Okay, let's load that, and I'll, I'll select all this, the panels. Let's select all the panels. I'll select one, and then use this um, select all vertical criteria, and then horizontal criteria to select all of them. I'm going to change this to um, deleted panels, because I don't want to use panels there. I'm just going to delete it so that uh, i also want to remain only with a box not with divisions so the best thing is to do is to get rid of two and b to remain with one and then if you go to frames i'm going to uh, act, uh what you call uh, the boundary because now I, we're left with only the boundary let's activate the boundary and then uh Go to the boundary frame type and change the size to be, I'll say 600. For now, this also is going to be 600. I'll set this to be zero because we don't have uh, what you go. We don't have the the panels in between. So I'll hit OK to apply the changes. Perfect. That's what I wanted to create, just a box. So it has to go all the way to there. So let's open its settings because the position is important. Under curtain wall system, we can change that here to be zero. Let's make it to be zero so that it flashes that. Perfect. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to create. And I'm gonna play around with this to stagger them all the way to the height. So 
um, to do that, let's go back and uh, I would want to open this elevation, right? In order for me to achieve that uh, kind of uh, staggering. Let's right click on this, select the elevation and right click with open view settings. And uh, let's just wait for it a bit to open. I'm using a laptop to record this uh, tutorial, but it's not that uh, powerful. As you can see, it takes time to load, but I hope this won't annoy you guys. You'll be, be with me. Okay, so that's basically what we have. I would want to check a few settings for this elevation. Let's find the elevation section. Which side is this? This is north elevation. So I'll right click on this, select this, right click, let's find elevation settings. And I'm going to overwrite or make the pens to be one under model appearance. So I'm gonna increase the size of this window. And then under uncut elements, let's make uniform pen. Oh, make it uniform pen and uh, yeah, whatever pen you would prefer. I can activate shadows if I want just to enhance my elevation. And okay, that's basically what I wanted. And I don't want to have elements. See now we can see uh, what what what's with within the spaces because the transparency of the windows are active or the glass. So let's go back again to the elevation settings and uncheck the transparency of of the elements here is the transparency and check this uh, box it should be fine now you cannot see through the elements yes right now your elevations look super you can see that's very impressive it's very impressive right so on this one i'm going to stagger them according to the pockets and portions of glazing of each floors right so to achieve that i'll control shift d to get a copy of this place it there and then what i need to do uh, on this one i don't know i can either um stretch the height the length of this for here no i cannot you can see the tools that are being given here it's only for the height right so i can only stretch it on the second floor on its on the home store which is second floor let's open the second floor there's the one i want to stretch it from here to this corner so if we check there on 3d you have something like that okay you have something like that you could have you could have them too and then i can also do the same Let's control shift D, carry a copy to the other level. Right? And then for this one, I'm going to, instead of stretching it from this side, I'm going to do it from the other side. Let's open story 3 and do the same. But this time around, we're stretching it from this side to end here. Check on 3D. That's basically what we have. So that's what I will do up until I reach the highest point. So I will, uh, I can come here instead of using it on 3D. This time around, I'll just copy and paste it to the relevant flow. Why does copying takes forever? Then paste it here. I'll click outside to complete. This one, I'm going to make it full. Or let's undo this one. I can just uh, have it only on this corner. Let's see on 3D. Is it something that I can I can like? Yes. Let's continue with that system. I would go to five floor five. Control paste this one. Control, control paste another floor control V to paste just like that 
control V to paste the other flow and the last flow which is flow 10 perfect so um let's start from uh, is it four yes i think it's five five because we have that one we can continue with this and this one we can stretch it all the way to there uh, this one yes and then number seven it can be a full a full stretch eight eight we must start on this corner just like that ninth ninth we must go all the way from here and then this will restrict it to the score tenth what about 10th? Ten? 10th, it has to be a full one. Let's make it a full one and see the results. Perfect. I'm impressed. I can change the color. I can change the color for all these elements. Let me just select all of them. Okay. Let me select select all of them just like that then let's the first thing that i need to do is to group them because they are in that category and control l to create a different layer for this this one will be option one hit enter then it's supposed to be active under this layer okay so i can also play around with the options again here but i'll do it later so let's just have this active under the all layer combination right and then the same applies to drafting let's have it active so that we can uh, have them visible in your 3d win Let's wait for it to update there we go oh we've lost other things but because uh we've loaded a, a different um, layer combination we want to load all of this let's load all of the elements all right so i wanted to select i wanted to change the material for this so i would suspend group to select all of them then open its settings on the settings we need to go to the frames because that's the frames that we're dealing with more especially the boundary frame let's come here under curtain wall frame settings instead of having this at an uh, army okay i'll override the surface and make sure i find something let me find some paint i don't know should i go with uh let's just find a quick color which is that one have something like this perfect i love it i love it I, I, I look at how it created this uh line we could also play around with some shading device for these areas they are like this okay let's also i think let me do that especially one and two okay i'm going to i can just do it here on 3d let's activate the curtain wall tool and then i'll just draw it from this point to there i think it's been placed on the ground i don't know what level is this let's see the floor and then see what level is that is the third level i'll select this curtain wall and link it to that level which is level three let's go to select story let's find three hit okay it will go there perfect instead of using it should go all the way again i'll stretch it let's pick the point and stretch the height all the way to the fifth floor perfect so i'm going to open its settings and try to create a pattern that will shade that area so i'm gonna go here under scheme 
let's change the schemes favorites to this one and uh, and uh, what I need to do is to create more like a breeze block wow. that would be more a perforations that symbol symbolize the brick pattern okay I need to create a brick pattern here so in order for me to do I need to make all this to be one I'll select one panel and then use vertically and then select also horizontally this is going to be a deleted panel again and then uh, here I'm going to have this frame to be deleted and then uh, I'm going to have this also deleted let's add another row let's add another row here this row will have this as a, a transom then this will be deleted so yes the pattern has to be seamless remember so in order for it to seamless the last edge these two edges has to be opposite edges so instead of having this it's repeating itself I'll add another row that will be just a full brick now we have full brick half two bricks full and half two bricks when you stack them together they form a seamless uh, pattern this one we have to close it off this frame has to be visible so I'll say transom perfect and then the size also matters the height of the rows I'm going to make it 300 each each row 300 something like that no no it's perfect so now i need to increase the size of the frame so i'll go here under frames and transom they're under transom they're all under transom so and then come here under transom frame type set this to be 300 okay this also can be 300 if you want or maybe you have wow look at the graphic <laughs> it looks horrible so oh because our okay no let's just leave it at 100 maybe 80 i think let's just leave it at 80 even this one at 80 go for 100 i don't know 100 looks oh yeah and then we hit OK. Let's see the changes. Wait for it. Perfect. There we go. That's what we have. But we have the boundary. We don't want to see the, the frame, the boundary frame for that. I'm going to select it, go back to the options, I'm, I'm in the settings, and then under the boundary frame, I'm going to change this to be invisible. Then hit OK. So we'll have kind of this let's make sure oh sorry sorry about that i wanted to stretch the height oh why am i not be able to select oh i can just extend it from here maybe instead of let's make it nine yeah let's see Downstairs. Perfect. That's basically what I wanted. And I can also make a wood finish. Let's go back and make a wood finish. Um, I think it's a transom frame. Let's go here under Catamo frame. Select to override the surface and find. Let's search for wood. I'll go for mahogany vertical. Hit OK to create that. Okay, that's perfect. It looks great. It looks great. So this can be also repeated there. I can select this wall. Control Shift D. Let's use um, this corner as the copying point. This corner. And then let's go all the way to there. And then I'll place it here perfect so this can be stretched accordingly stretch this to oh no let's do it on the floor plane which level are we we're on the seventh story let's open 
that and uh, we here it is I think we need to drag it outside it has to be here and I'll stretch this all the way to there is it how let's see Okay, the height I'm going to reduce the height to that level perfect I think again this has to go has to extend all the way to the edges so I don't know why let's stretch it all the way to the, to the wire basically same applies to this one it should be fine now I think I've overdone this one let's undo yes all right that's what I wanted you can also do with those remaining pockets but um, that will be your assignment so finish off the pockets that are remaining which is this pocket this one and that one that will complete our 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 design okay so uh, i will select all of this and make sure they are under option one right make sure they're under option one and then i'm gonna control l and create another option so let's create a new layer called option 2 hit ok this layer has to be active under this layer, under this and then um, yeah I think it came the time the time that I need to create a different layer combination for these options as the correct one so let's just come here under new and then say option 1 ok another one option two Good. okay and then i'll make sure option two is only active under option one under option two sorry and then option one will be off under this let's say update do the same to option one option two layer will be off only option one layer will be active under option one right but the rest of the elements will be active okay so if I say option one, hit OK, it will still remain as it is. No changes should be. Um, yeah, it still remains the way it is. But if I control L again and bring option two, now option one elements should be off because you want to load in option two elements. That's the whole um, essence behind this. So now we see this is. It's not yet there let's assign it inappropriately okay so it's option one we can also toggle between here and on the bottom say option one to give us all the elements under option one right when you say option two those elements will disappear perfect so now let's create another option right so for this option what I want is to create a, a gigantic facade or curtain wall. So I'll start from straight away from ground. And then uh, let's say um, activate the curtain wall. And then I'll draw it from this corner all the way to the right. Once we are done, I think let's flip it to the outside because let's just flip it. Yes, perfect. So if we check on 3D, we have this curtain wall that we want to stretch its height all the way to the top. Just to take the height of the building. Something like that. Just wait a sec for it to update takes a bit of time because the curtain wall um, for small machines like this one I'm using to record it will be a challenge this is basically what I have 
I'm going to go to options. I mean settings of this under schemes change the favorites i'll just pick something that's available here but if i have time i'll create my own pattern but uh, let's just go with the honeycomb right yes and then hit ok to apply honeycomb to our surface i've done videos about creating different patterns and kettenons i'll put the link on the description in order for you to check those videos there's a video that i was creating in office tower um, if you want to reinforce what I've, I've, I've shared with you, what I've demonstrated on this video, I think it's better you to check that video. Uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to see. And then I'm, go I'm going to create a gigantic columns that will crisscross and create a, a wow effect. Okay, so in order for me to achieve that, let's say um, I'll open this elevation. Let's open that elevation right and then uh, we would have this kind of uh, stuff perfect so what i need to do here is to sketch i'll just collapse the design two parts and expand the what you call the documents let's click the polyline i'll use a box what i'll do i'll sketch here the box up to this up to this floor where is the box so let's make sure the box is in a contrast color right click and then bring it to front something like that i'll take this box Control shift d bring it down at oh what happened bring it down here and uh, this box will guide us on what we want to do so i'm gonna draw a line again change the line pen to be red this line is gonna go all the way to there or from here to there from there to here perfect and then uh, on this box let me see if i can chamfer all the edges by maybe 500 apply to all corners 500 is too small let's try a different value maybe 1.5 make sure apply all corners it's been checked so let me see if this can be a continuous thing to here and this also move it to there because that's what I wanted let's chamfer also this to all corners and then let's see if we move this up to there uh, I wanted this to be in the same line but if not I could make it manual to be in the same line like that same applies to this side okay so now we have we have these pockets that we are creating and uh, here I will have to make it chamfer, make it come all the way to this level even though I don't know how I'm going to support it but for the sake of this I will, I will do that okay so let's take all these um, sketches or all these lines take them and move them outside your drawing I think let's get rid of this sorry, by mistake okay so I will have to reproduce this with a, a, a solid uh, line so I'm going to say you a polyline and then I'm going to trace it over to have one line trace it over like that like this same applies to this side and then done so what we have here oh, I can get rid of other elements right because I just wanted to use them as my guidelines so what I have is this kind of a shape right and uh, I want to I want this shape to be right like that okay can I use can I pick the right point 
in order for me to align it. Yes, something like this. It will be a giant feature like that. So in order for us to achieve this, we're going to use a shell tool. So I'm going to copy this because shell tool only works on the floor plans, not on elevation. So I'll come on the story one because there are no lot of things there. And control V to paste that um, sketch. I'm just gonna move it somewhere here and then click outside the MyQ to complete the operation. Let's go to the design tool palette and activate the shell tool. On the geometry method, you would want to have your extruded um, method to be or input to be active. And then under construction method, you'd want to activate your detailed um, uh, input. So under structure, I want this just to be basic and I'm going to use, uh, let's find aluminium. I'm going to use aluminium for this. Do I have aluminium? Okay, there we go. Here it is. And then I'm going to activate the magic one by hold, by press and hold the space bar key and then click on this line. The extrusion is going to be 600. Hit enter. And uh, instead of having the reference line in the inside, let's flip it to the outside. So I'm gonna scroll in the info box and find the thickness and then flip to the inside like that. And then also the thickness is going to be 600. Just to have a, a thicker line. So if we check on 3D, you would have uh, that element there, okay? We have this element here. This element I would change, I'll give it a layer for option two. As well, same applies to this curtain wall. It has to be on option two. Okay, so we need now to rotate this vertical. I think the best way is to do it on uh, you could do it on 3D by control E and then pick this surface. Yeah, and then make sure it's straight, then you can rotate it up by. 90 degrees there we go it's been rotated i don't know which level is this is on zero story one so if you go back to story one we should see it in the floor plan if we if we don't if we doesn't see it on the floor plan it means we need to select it and come here under floor plan and section make sure this is on home story so if you say home story and go back we should see it where is it oh maybe the layer is off because we're using a different um, view let's control l and bring the option to um, layer combination so we we'll see now our element is here let's uh control d and try position it to the correct point which is there it has to go outside like that so if we check on 3d all right now we'll have to set it to be zero let's set it to be zero which is the offset height perfect we have this kind of uh, i still feel the thickness of this it's still it can be increased let's instead of 600 let's go for a meter yeah not bad okay that's basically what i wanted now we affected the entrance of the site we can clean up this by creating a hole or a maybe an element that we can use it to punch in the hole in our curtain wall and use a solid element operation to subtract that. Let's just do it quickly. I would go to the, let's just use the ground floor plan. And uh, I would use a slab for that scenario. Let's activate the slab and then draw a line, a box of a slab like so. This has to cover the height of the level, which is three meters. Okay, and then Let's scroll down and make sure the reference plane location is at the bottom. Check on 3D. That's basically what we have. 
and I'm going to activate the solid element operation to subtract that. I'll pick the curtain wall, right click, then connect to bring solid element operation. By default, it's been selected or added as a target. So I need to select this as an operator and then hit on subtraction. So if we select this layer now, put it as a I'll put it as a, a hidden layer or hidden element, right? And then control L, make sure the hidden layer is always hidden in all. I'll do it in all, yeah, yeah, in all in all layer combinations. And then hit OK. So we will have now the opening for our cars to go in there right so we can uh, say i can play around with the design and say i'm treating this portions this pocket separately okay i'm treating these portions separately or differently in terms of uh the patterns that i'm i would want to use yeah so let's say i'll I'll close off this. Let's say we open the elevation. On the elevation, where is this? The elevation is supposed to be under our control L and then bring this to be option two, right? On option two, all the elements are supposed to be visible. Let's just wait for it to go up to update. There we go. We have that. And then I need to, like I said, I want to treat this line separately. So I could get rid of this line. It's done its purpose or it served its purpose. So I uh, will select the curtain wall and hit on edit. Once you've, um, you're on edit, what I need to do is to uh, activate the screen, skin grid. And then switch it off the frame panel. You know what? The best way let's let's just use uh, instead of going this route. Uh, let's say we could use the same. We could use the same uh, uh, pattern, the, the same operation we've used to subtract the opening for the uh, access to the parking. I'm gonna go to the documents and then draw a. Let's just draw a sketch line like that. That. Well, I could have just used a, a morph to achieve this. Activate a morph. Zoom in and use this line as place it using uh, magic wand by activating by press and hold the shift. Uh, I mean the space bar you know keyboard so let's take this move and control shift m let's mirror it to the other side i suppose this pockets are equal i don't know why they're not i thought they're equal okay if they're not equal let's just get rid of this but they're supposed to be equal <laughs> i don't know what happened uh there so let's activate again the move this time around i'm going just to draw it instead of using the line tool let's just draw a morph like that perfect so if we check on 3d we would have this
okay let's just draw it straight away with the move tool activate move and then on the geometry method here make sure the polygonal um, command has been checked so that we can trace over this area like that and then conclude so now we have uh, so if we check on 3d we have both uh, morphs for both sides are active just need for us to extrude it okay let's uh, see zoom in there select both of these morphs surfaces and then click on the surface and on the pet palette let's activate the push and pull or the extrude command and then i'm going to extrude it all the way to there perfect so let's use these elements to subtract a hole into our our, our curtain wall. so i'll select the curtain wall. let's right click on the space there connect solid element operations um, by default like usual the selected element will be added as a target so i would select these two morphs and add them as an operator i'm going just to use subtraction hit execute to cut the hole and then from there we need to take these two elements morphs let's put them under a hidden layer oh, sorry under hidden layer that's basically what we have All right so you could do a lot with this kind of uh, method and and achieve different results so what i wanted to us to achieve is to have um a design options to say one we have uh, option one which is this kind of uh, pattern and then if you switch it off to option two it will give you a different style that's how you can uh, toggle between options you can create different variation or variation of design options and make sure you can present it that manner that's what i wanted to share with you guys